Hey Wampus, welcome back to a new tutorial. In this one, we are going to have a look at curves. Yes, they are finally here and we are super excited to give it out into your hands early. They're still quite experimental, so bear with us if they're not functioning absolutely perfect yet, but they are very powerful and giving you a lot of options on how they are already. So we're gonna have a look at how to use them as well as some tips and tricks and, and inspiration on how you can use them. So I hope you're excited and let's get started. So the first thing that we see here straight away is this beautiful curves text made by our user Lidas. And the amazing thing about this text is that this is one single curve, meaning that you can almost do unlimited points with them. As you can see on the left in our scene list, this is the curves primitive and it features 56 points. That is really crazy and allows for a lot of different kind of options and shapes to form from the curves. Now, where do we actually find curves? If we have a look at our top bar in the objects menu, this is where we find our primitives. And now there's a new primitive called two point. If we click on that, we get out the base of the curves that we can now work with. Now there's something really important to understand about how curves work in the scene list. When you get out a new curve, they come inside of a union. So they work just like normal unions, but inside of that union, there now is the curve primitive. That curve primitive has points, and those points you can add it to create the curve. For example, we can move the second point, then we can add another point by clicking on the plus icon next to the curve primitive, that adds a third point that is now inside of here, so you need to move it somewhere else, and that creates the curve. So in a way, the curve primitive is its own union that features the points as the childs of the union. If you want your curve to be affected by other primitives or other curves, it needs to be inside of that union that the curve is in. But you can simply also drag the curve outside of the union and now it's simply a part of the layering system just like other primitives. Now, the interesting thing that we can do with the points is that we can also scale them, rotate them and make other changes to them, like changing the color. If we have a look at the properties menu at the right, here we have the options to make changes to things. And here we can, for example, change the color and the material. And the amazing thing about this is that you see it automatically has the gradient between the points. If we click on the first point and give that a different color, it automatically creates that gradient into the next color and that allows for some really beautiful results. So now I've just added a few more points by simply clicking on the plus icon as I've shown you before, but we can also simply remove points again by clicking on the minus icon. I've then colored each individual point with a different color that makes this beautiful color variety and the gradients between the points and now with that, I would like to show you a few more amazing options that we have when selecting our primitive in the scene list. So now we have the properties menu at the right, where we can, for example, change the primitive of the curve. Now we have the cylinder curve or the cube curve. Really amazing options with that. I highly recommend to play around with that and use it. Um, one of the amazing things about this is that we can simply go to one of the points and we can drag it low so it's like a flat cylinder and like that we can make flat curves as well or edgy curves it's it's really amazing and another amazing option that we have in this property menu is to change it to positive or negative we can subtract with curves as well and here we have the roundness slider this is maybe my favorite option about the curves if we drag it to the right to the free value we have the most rounded curve super smooth and even better in my opinion, if we drag it to the number one, we have this stylized low poly edgy curve and I'm such a huge fan of that, it's amazing. I have more examples about that. And then we have the density option. This is also really amazing because if we drag that down, we see that there's now, <laughs> yeah, it's like there's spacing between the spheres that form the curve. It's really, really cool, allows for some really good stuff as well. 
And we also, of course, have the goop strength. The thing is, right now you need a bit of goop strength to make the curve seamless. You can see it a bit here. If we change it to that, you see the curve's not completely smooth if it doesn't have goop strength. We want to work on that, but so far we recommend to put in a bit of goop strength to make it more smooth. So now let's have a look at some of the examples that I've prepared in the scene for you guys to show you a little more on the options that I just talked about. So first off, we have the staff here. This is like a wooden staff that I made. And this I prepared especially for the roundness option that I've just talked about that I'm so in love with. So here we can round it up even more, but even better when we put roundness on one. Now look at that. I'm, I'm really in love with this shape. This is so cool. It's like this super stylized edgy style that really reminds me to the old sucker punch style as well. Really, really love that option. Then we have this kind of spiral thing and that is simply just two points, but one of the points is actually rotated. So if we have a look at it and just rotate it again, you see how it really creates this amazing spiral. This was inspired by one of our users, Speedy, who shared this in our server. Now we can also <laughs> have more experiments by going low with the density. It creates this really interesting kind of stuff as well. We'll change the primitive. So many cool options with that really. And then what do we have here? Is that a cone? <laughs> yes, we can actually even make cones. This is also very simple. Just two points. The lower point is like the bigger point and then the higher point is this super tiny point that creates that cone. And I simply then subtract it with a cube below. So with that, we basically have a cone primitive created out of curves really really simple cool stuff and then the last thing that i have here is some stairs um, let's just quickly turn off the other things for that or i just delete them for that don't worry um, here we have another curve that i created and now if we change that to cubes for example and then play around with the density now look at that, we can create stairs with it. And now if we make it the roundness to one, it's like super edgy kind of stairs. And that obviously allows for all kinds of things as well. It's just giving you some inspiration on what you can do maybe. It's just so many options. This tool is absolutely crazy. So here's a few more examples on how I use the curves. This right here is Hornet, a character from Hollow Knight who consists almost entirely out of curves and was one of my first tries with the curves to make some clothes and you know, the horns, yeah, but the whole character is basically curves, but I think it's really, really cool to see how you can use them for characters as well. Another test that I did for characters is this right here. I used the curves for the lips as well as the hair and the eyebrows. I think it's really cool what kind of structures you can create with it and how easily you can create some decent looking hair now. Um, we we'll turn this off, <laughs> it looks a bit weird, but from the back you can see it even more how the curves are really shaping the hair really, really amazingly. Like the structure is so, so cool with the curves. And this is actually like a cube curve that's rounded up a little bit and gooped together with the others. So that's really, really nice. Can't wait to see what you guys will do with that. And then the last example for me is my Halloween pumpkin where I used the curves to create the stylized looking roots. I think they turned out really cool. One of the amazing things is then that I struggled with in the decision again is here when if I would do like the low poly style with the roundness option. I also copied the exact same curve and then made it a negative to create this kind of um, subtraction on it to create that even more structure and stylized look on, on the curves and the roots here. I think it looks really nice. Also used it to cover up the leaves here, give it that detail. So yeah, so, so many new possibilities with the new curves. It's kind of like the ultimate primitive. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial or found it helpful and that you're excited to play around with them yourself. For that, I've gathered a bit more inspiration. So here's a compilation on how the community and team members use the curve so far. Please enjoy.